I read Bassoon Reading Making and Pedagogic History by Dr. S. So, how did this book affect me personally? So this book was really interesting because from our perspective as students of Dr. S, you can really see how what she has learned from making this book and you know everything she has done to put into this book, she also has put into teaching us in read class and rep class. Um, you'll see that as I talk more and more about the book. So number two, what contribution does this book provide for the field at large? So this book provides a massive overview of a lot of different things in the bassoon uh, history. So it talks about bassoon making history, the developments of that, like the French bassoon and the German bassoon and how the German bassoon won out between the French and the German bassoon. It talks about uh, bassoon repertoire and pedagogy history. It talks about bassoon reed making and bassoon reed making history as well. So who is the audience for this book? Who is Dr. S writing this book for? So the primary audience for this book, in my opinion, is bassoonists. Professional bassoonists, you know, teachers and students. And this book uh, uses a lot of big words that frequent Dr. S's vocabulary sets and they're an interesting thing. And you'll hear more about that when I talk about uh, how it was to read the book. So was this book compelling how or how not? So yeah, as I mentioned before, this book was really interesting as a student of Dr. S's because you can really see a lot of different things that she talk, has talked to us about being put into this book. Um, for example, like the when she was talking to us the other day in rep class about uh, bassoon trees and uh, the importance of Simon Kovar and how he made learning bassoon more accessible uh, for young for bassoonists uh, by making breaking the mold of teaching a single student and he taught numerous students during his career numerous uh, at a time. However, the book was a bit of a dry read. Um, yeah, it was very academically written, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but the good thing about it was that's probably the best way you can write a book like this. Um, however, there was a lot of historical quotes and diagrams in the book that provide a fresh refrain from the dense reading. Uh, and they were always related to the text and then enhanced the points that Dr. S made in her her writing. So did any quotes strike you as particularly memorable? So yeah, um, here's a quote uh, she mentions. Uh, this comes from Lou Skinner. So there's two ways of teaching people how to make a bassoon read. One way is to lay out a recipe to be followed step by step. The other way is to explain the principles of how a read should function going uh giving the makers the information need to create their own recipes when we first went to lou skinner for lessons most of us taught different read recipes based on his remarkable perception of what we needed to know as at the moment gradually as our lesson continued we began to understand the theories that he had been telling us from the beginning so this quote was from a student of lou skinner um who is a 20th century american bassoonist and put pedagogue who uh, taught read making to his students and he also uh, changed gouging methods and uh, expanded upon eccentric gouges which are more elliptical shaped gouge and concentric gouges which are uh, inverted gouges. So next we're going to talk about the author's credentials. Who is the author? So Dr. S, we all know and love her, she is the author of this book. Uh, the the teacher who does not make any B reads. Uh, so if you don't know already, she's hailed as a soloist teacher in Force of Nature by the Double Read, which is the journal of the International Double Read Society, or RDRS. She has recorded three solo albums uh, titled Bassoon Unbounded from 2018, Bassoon Transcended from 2013, and Bassoon Surrounded from 2009. Dr. S is currently on faculty at Ithaca College in New York, she is our teacher, if you weren't already aware, <coughs> Nate. Previously, she has held positions with Miami University, the University of Nevada, and various orchestras throughout the West. Dr. S has received degrees from Northwestern, Michigan State, and Arizona State Universities under the guidance of Robert Barris, Barrick Sees, Michael Croft, Albie Micklick, 
and Jeffrey Lyman. So what did I learn from reading this book? So I learned about how the scraping of Cain changed and how reeds have become much more softer um, as a result from scraping uh, in, the, in the gouging process from originally being pith to bark and now modern reed makers use bark to pith so it's a much softer reed that is more flexible uh, more responsive and is easier to play and has a bigger dynamic range uh, so as a result though the reeds uh, don't last as long uh, but bassoons now make reeds themselves uh, they previously were made by bassoon makers themselves. Uh, another thing I learned is the development of the French bassoon versus the German bassoon and how the German bassoon became integrated into musical society um, and the development of the John Court French bassoon and the Almenrader Heckel German bassoon. Um, and German bassoon professionals started making reeds themselves uh, much earlier than French bassoonists did. Uh, and also, um, Julius Weisenborn, this book, uh, he made a pedagogic method book, which was the largest book to date, and still, uh, referenced frequently now, uh, and it was developed exclusively for, uh, German Heckel Almenrader bassoons, and so it really, uh, helped out with the development and integration of the German bassoon and wi more widespread acceptance of it, uh, for, for bassoonists. Another thing I learned was uh, Don Christley, inventor of the Dow Indicator. Uh, he was the father of Pete Christley. This isn't from her book, but I knew Pete because he's an L.A. based jazz saxophonist I've been listening to, and so I had heard of that his dad was a bassoonist, but I didn't know that he his dad invented the Dow Indicator as we know it, and based and changed the reed uh, scraping methods as we know it, uh, and making them more consistent. Also, developments made by Lou Skinner, Norman Hertzberg, uh, who was a reed pedagogue, who developed the Hertzberg reed to try and correct problems such as mid-range E and C-sharp from collapse and going flat. Uh, he used a narrower shape of reed than previous methods. And also, uh, she talked about Hugh Cooper, who continued to develop more consistent and uniform reeds. Uh, he also talked about how uh, it's important to have symmetric reeds that were balanced on both sides of the blades. And these examples were among others uh, provide contributions to bassoon and reed pedagogical development. But an important thing to note was these were all 20th century uh, bassoons who developed reed making in the last century. Uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, as previously a lot of it took a long time for bassoonists to change their reading making methods and also uh, teach students and uh, spread what they how they do their reading making to others and so number eight did you recommend this book to others and who so uh, I would recommend this book to other bassoonists uh, bassoon students or anyone uh, any musician who wants to expand their knowledge of the bassoon uh, this book makes for a great resource to teach other bassoon enthusiasts about the advancements of all things bassoon. Um, specifically, the rest of the bassoon studio should really consider reading this book before they graduate. Uh, I'm surprised Dr. S doesn't make it mandatory, but let's get on here. <laughs> I guess if she doesn't, maybe it's more encourages people to read it so they don't have to just like, oh, just like read it and not read it because they want to actually learn and enjoy the content in it. Uh, so number nine, what is the tone of their writing? Uh, so I'd say this is a very dense and slightly challenging read. It mostly reads like an academic research essay, but like I said earlier, it's probably the best way you can present this information. Uh, it's a short book, however, so it makes up for it. It's about 115 pages long. Uh, I read it in one morning. Um, it's got about 35 pages of extra cu curricular, such as an appendix and bibli bibliography and other stuff. If you're interested, you can go see like where she got her information from uh, for yourself. And so, number 10, finally, what is the biggest thing you learned from this book? 
So the overall takeaway I'd say from this book is uh, a little cliche. So Rome wasn't built in a day, right? It took a really long time to ve- develop the bassoon as we know it today. Bassoon reeds, bassoon pedagogy, and bassoon reed pedagogy took over 300 years to get where we are today. So now my book review is now concluded. Please let me know if you have any questions about the book or better yet, ask the author herself.